Welcome back to the Bluegrass Breakdown Radio Show. We got a great guest on the line, in my opinion at least, probably, arguably, the best blogger in the whole state. Mike Rutherford. How you doing, Mike? Not bad. How are you guys? Doing great. Got to start off by, by thanking you for, for coming on with us. You uh, provided a lot of great reading material for your site, cardchronicle.com. Uh, def- definitely appreciate you coming on. Oh, no problem. Happy to do it. I'm a big fan of the show. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as many people are across the state. <laughs> um, we got we got a few things we wanted to talk to you about. I guess for starters, uh, I was saying over the over the break that I heard you on 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 Diener's show this morning, which is good stuff. I really like that. It caught me off guard. I didn't I didn't know you were going to be on there. One of the things you I, guys, I didn't know, I didn't know I was going to be on there. Drew texted me uh, about ten minutes after I woke up and said, uh, "You know, you're going to go on the top of the hour." I assumed the next hour turned out he meant five minutes from now, top of the hour. So I, I appreciate that, Drew. If you wish. I, I I like how how Drew's been having you come on. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I haven't seen so much of him getting like anything like that, but I think that's great. I, I love love hearing you on there. So. I was going to mention one of the things that I heard you all talking about was the, as everyone knows, the very prestigious Card Chronicle Man of the Year. And, you know, not to get, you know, I, I hate starting controversy, but <laughs> how did you, I mean, a tie? Did that really happen? I really, you know, I, I don't know what happened. I know I went to sleep. I guess it was the second amount of voting. Charlie Strong was way up. I was sort of surprised. I figured it'd be a two horse race between he and uh, Preston Knowles. And I woke up and all of a sudden Preston Knowles was winning by a little bit. I, you know, I don't, people give me way too much credit for being technologically savvy. I really don't know anything about computers. I don't know anything about designing websites. I basically just use the editor word tool, word tool and write stuff and post it. And that's all I do. But I did wake up. I thought it was a little, it definitely was a little fishy that I woke up. I didn't actually see it. Somebody sent me a message and said, you know, this thing ended in the exact tie. I checked it out. I think it was like 941 individual votes for, for both those guys or something like that. But yeah, it was an exact identical tie between Knowles and Charlie Strong for uh, the 2011 Card Chronicle Man of the Year, as you said, the prestigious honor. Oh, very prestigious. I mean, <laughs> I think two very deserving guys. Charlie Strong, obviously, with the recruitee, and as Tyler here likes to remind me, Clint Hurt have been pulling in, especially even over the last few days. I mean, it's just... Uh, certainly unprecedented in this part of the country. What, what do you think about the recruits that have been signing on with the cards lately? Well, it has been. It's been an unreal sort of couple of weeks and really an unreal sort of couple of years. Somebody actually asked me, I think it was two nights ago, have you ever seen anything like this in Louisville? And uh, the truth is we really haven't as far as landing these four-star, being in the mix with some five-star out-of-state process. Uh, the biggest recruiting year Bob Channel had, you know, those two years were headlined by you know, local guys. He got Michael Bush, he got Brian Brown, then he got, uh, you know, Mario Rudia, he got Montreal Jones, transfer, and those were all guys from the city of Louisville. So these are guys from Miami, you know, the hotbed, the center of high school football. And uh, to land, you know, a guy like Nick Burgess, who's been committed to Miami, to maybe land a guy like uh, Keith Brown, who has scholarship offers from virtually everybody, uh, maybe a Nick Thompson on Saturday, it's, it's pretty unreal what these guys have been able to do. And that's not even mentioning, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, Eli Rogers, and those guys from last year. Or, or, or you, you, I don't think you even mentioned the two guys, uh, the tight end, did you? Uh, yeah, the transfers, guys. absolutely. Uh, transfers. Joe yeah. Christian was the number two tight end in the country, according to rivals coming out of high school. I think something like the number 43 player overall, because he could play linebacker, he could play fullback, and he still can play those positions if we need him. He's an absolutely huge land. When you look at the, the tight end position, losing Josh Chichester this year, losing Stephon Ball and uh, Nate Nord after next year, I mean, he's going to say, here's a chance to step right in and be a starter from day one. Certainly. Um, let's see here. One of the, the hot topics, at least within our site, has been kind of, you know, I, I exaggerate a little and I get excited. I am a Cards fan. Uh, Russ Smith, I, I always like to, first, you know, full disclosure, I like to throw out ridiculous comparisons. <laughs> when Gorgie Jang earlier this season was – Perfect from the field. I jokingly said on my Facebook, Gorgie is the next Bill Walton. Um, <laughs> so I've been saying, you know, jokingly that, that Russ Smith is, you know, Allen Iverson or Kemba Walker. And it's kind of gotten under some people's skin um, in the site. What 
Who would you compare Russ Smith to? I think Russ is Russ. I, I, he's one of those people you just you cannot compare him to anything. You certainly can't compare him to anyone who's played at Louisville. I think it's just yeah, I've deemed it the the Russ this Russ Smith thing. I think it's the uh, the forward phrase that I've just used because there's no, I mean nobody saw this coming. I mean there were some people last year who said you know I kind of like the way he does this, I kind of like the way he does that, but there was no one who was going to say he's going to be your second leading scorer heading into January. He's going to score thirty points at Kentucky at Rupp Arena, and that 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 wasn't Russ Smith. It wasn't him at the beginning of the year. It wasn't him at all last year. I, I don't – he does – like Rick Pitino said, he does things that nobody else on this team does. And Pitino even said, I think, he does stuff that nobody he's ever had at Louisville does. He just – he just – he has no conscience. <laughs> he can get in the lane at will. He takes ridiculous shots, but he makes ridiculous shots. I think he's, he's, you know, he's second on the team in scoring. Uh, he's, I think, third in the Big East Conference in shots attempted and also second in steals. He just uh, the, the numbers just they don't make any sense when you look at them. And this you know the fact of the matter he's not starting. I mean he plays he's playing 22, 25 minutes a game and putting up just absurd stat lines. I, don't, I, I, I if you ask me to compare him to somebody, I, I can't do it. Which is why I think we need to get the R. Smith off the back of his jersey and just put Russ there because it's just he's Russ. He, there's there's just there's no other way to accurately explain it. Now being a man who has started many successful campaigns, I mean you had. The bring chicken to the bucket. I mean, you have started just, and they always gain all this momentum. How serious are you about this? Um, add, you know, make Russ Smith's back of his jersey just say Russ. How serious are you with that? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm 100 percent serious. I, there's no way it's going to happen. But uh, I mean, if if I had the power, I, I would absolutely uh, do whatever I could because I think it would be great. I mean, they already say Russ when he makes shots at the young center, so uh, I think it's it's only fitting. But I mean, obviously that's not that's not going to happen. And, uh, yeah, bring chicken to the bucket. It was successful in terms of getting attention, but, uh, <laughs> chicken is not going to be coming to the bucket, at least wearing a local uniform. He at could least transfer. Not yet. He I, could I, end I, up I transfer. Given up. There's crazy things happening in college basketball. I, I would go ahead and say, instead of Russ, I was looking at your site just now. Of course, we have Mike Rutherford from the card chronicle.com here. Um, what about rustling on the back of the shirt? I kind of like that. I, I, I mean, I, obviously I'm in favor of that. I'm trying to keep it at least semi realistic, but I mean, if you could put, <laughs> You know, Russell Mania and Russ We Trust, Russ CTV. Maybe they could just change it up every game. I would absolutely be a I'm fan vote. I'll totally have to, if I had a vote from KentuckySports.co, I would totally go with In Russ We Trust just because it reminds me of In Billy We Trust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a reason not to have it on uh, there. Yeah. But still, I, th- I think the fan vote's a great idea. And if it wins out, then I'm 100% behind it. My only point of reference for that is. I- Correct me if I'm wrong. I think Ichiro Suzuki actually had his first name on the back of his jersey. I believe. Well, there's that. That's the loophole. If you can somehow convince people that Russ is Japanese, then <laughs> there's absolutely nothing stop nothing stopping us at that point. If it happened once in the MLB, why can't it happen for college basketball? I don't know. He's a small guy. He could probably pass. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. If he hates, he can do it. Russ Smith can do it. Exactly. Now, I would like to say, uh, obviously, we're. I guess we're to the halfway point of the season now. Uh, Louisville is at, I believe, is it 12, 13, and 2 now since the win the other night. Um, what are what did you think of the first half, and what are your predictions, you know, for the rest of the season to come? I think it was it was unexpected in, in a lot of respects. I, I wasn't sure that this team could be 13 and 2 at this point before the year, but I thought I would probably be. I thought at this point I would be more. Uh, I don't want to say optimistic, maybe enthusiastic about our chances to, to go to the Final Four and maybe win a national championship. Just the injuries have just been absolutely deflating. Um, you know, Wayne Blackshear was the one guy you sort of looked at before the year as, you know, the guy who could take some pressure off of Peyton Siva from a ability to break people down off the dribble and create his own shot. And that's actually become Russ Smith, which, and you know, you don't know how long that thing is going to carry over the whole Russ Smith thing. I don't know when this sort of luck is going to run out or if it's going to run out, but they need somebody else who can create their own shot because Kyle Kirk and Chris Smith can't do it. Peyton Steve is the only guy who can penetrate off the dribble and beat his man consistently and get into the lane. Uh, and you've got to have somebody like that if you want to make a really, really deep run at the NCAA tournament. Uh, this team's obviously got to start scoring more if it wants to beat, you know, if, if it wants to beat those teams once it gets into the tournament. Um, you know, so to be 13 and 2, though, it's hard to complain, especially when your only losses are to a pair of top 10 teams. Uh, I think a lot of the complaints that Louisville fans have had since last week have been a, a little bit over the top. Uh, it's disappointing to lose Kentucky always, and I think that makes people a lot less rational than they would be otherwise. Uh, it was a bad game offensively, but when you lose to, by seven 
uh, at the number two team in the country, especially in a rivalry game when you know they're going to get their best shot. It's, it's, it's hard to be disappointed about that in all honesty. It sucks to lose to a rival, but you have to keep some sort of frame of reference of what just happened. I think Louisville has a good shot if they can get some guys shooting the ball well, if they can get Peyton Stephen to get out of whatever funk he's in, if they can get Shane Bahan to play back to the way he was playing at the beginning of the season. I think they have a really good chance to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, the tournament's all about matchups and luck and a lot of stuff like that. And we've seen, you know, teams who probably, who definitely weren't the four best in the country make the final four the last couple of years. And you never know. If they can put themselves in that position, then uh, they have a chance to do something special. If they just keep improving and keep giving the effort that they've been given for the past two months. Oh, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Um, like you said about the the first half of the year in, in Louisville, um, the loss to two Kentucky a lot of the fans, you know, kind of, oh, you know, it's it, as a Kentucky fan, if we lost, we would have did the same thing, you know. It, it, it kind of, it's kind of overboard, but if you look at it in the, in the hindsight, it's not a big loss. It's your first. It was just, it was the second of the season, but like you said, two top ten teams. Uh, if it was to somebody else in the Big East, maybe a Syracuse or a, a UConn, Louisville fans, I don't think you, they would look at it okay, as yeah. much as uh, oh, the season's, you know, oh, what are we doing? We're losing to Kentucky. We're losing to UConn's a little different. So I, I will agree, you know, I think that Louisville will be okay, and Rick will have them come, you know, March, April to where he wants them to be. The offense needs to come around. I totally agree, but, you know, you got a top five, six team nationally defense out there. That offense can come around. Oh, absolutely. And I agree with you about the Kentucky point. I think the other thing with the Kentucky game is that it wasn't I, – I definitely do not blame the officials, but the way the game was called and the way it was played – it's just not indicative of either team's rest of the season, the way that their games are going to be. You know, both teams play with so much intensity in that game. The crowd's so intense that a lot of those, you know, the, the fouls that were called were fouls that had to be called. And I don't think either team's going to play that way in games in the future. I don't think games are going to be called that way either. It's just sort of, it sort of made it feel like an outlier. The rivalry game is always different from every other game, but it was just sort of, I don't know why people, I understand why people get upset because you lost to Kentucky, but I think people read too much into the actual exit and hose of the game and what's wrong and what worked and what didn't work. Well, I mean, obviously with us having started our, our own site, we're just kind of screwing around. We've all known each other for years. We're having a lot of fun with it. We get to talk to guys like you. and I mean, hell, we had Oscar Combs on the other day, whereas I'm a Cardinal fan. And Oscar Combs still, I mean, the, the fact that he can say he started covering, what did he say, he started covering U.K. basketball in the in 60s. The, in the rough area, right? So, I mean, the whole thing for me, this is just a lot of fun. Um, how, how did you, what, what made you want to get your site started? Uh, I basically, yeah, I'd come home from, uh, from college, I transferred back home, I was going to go to Bellarmine to finish up, and, uh, you know, I was just sort of, sort of bored. Uh, I wanted to write about something, I'd always, you know, journalism was my future plan at the time, and uh, I did, you know, I paired that love with my love of Louisville basketball or Louisville sports, and just started writing. And and you know, after a little bit, it gained attention, and then the folks at SB Nation contacted me and asked if I wanted to work for them. And I guess that was five years ago. So uh, it just, you know, it, uh, like you said, it's just it's something fun to do, and you know, now it's become a job for me. And it's something that takes up pretty much all my time now. But you know, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. It's great. I get to sit around and talk about college basketball pretty much. You know. 16, 17 hours a day, which is fantastic for me. Yeah. Seems pretty great. Well, Mike, I mean, we... I hate... We hate to. <laughs> I, 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 I read your blog every day. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Um, you know, go cards. Any any parting words? Uh, yeah, well, again, Mike... Any it was, you want a customer? Just so her, no, I don't. I, I, I'm a big fan of Mike Rutherford. I'm, oh, I'm I mean, not a, you're not so much a big I'm a Kentucky fan, fan but I, I can like the Cardinal, and I, I, you got to appreciate everything you've done for the card. For card fans, you appreciate everything you've done for the card. Chronicle. I've heard you say some pretty bad things about Mike behind his back. <laughs> don't listen to him. <laughs> but, yeah, we'd like to really, we got to go to a break, but we really do appreciate you you coming on. We'd like to have you on maybe towards the end of the season, towards the outcome. The yeah, going seriously. On. I, I, if, if we could have you on again, that would be great. We will be in touch with you about that. Well, no problem, guys. I appreciate having me. Well, all right. Well, you have a good night, Mike. Thanks a lot, Mike. We will be right back with some more from the Bluegrass Breakdown Radio Show. <laughs> 